The Tax Top Slicer 2023 is the latest version of my top slicing calculation app that was prompted by the discovery of significant errors in HMRC's methodology for calculating top slicing relief on chargeable event gains. I had hopes that come 23-4, there wouldn't be so much of a need for this, but alas, there is. And let me just talk you through the entries of this input screen, and um, we'll see why this is such an essential tool for anybody advising clients who have chargeable event gains and for whom top slicing relief is in point. I've input already uh, for the tax year 22-23, and by the way, um, instead of releasing individual years, as we have done previously, I've now done just a single version that deals with any of the five tax years, 1920 through to the current year, 23-4. So you get five all in one, as it were, and that partly reflects the way in which the revenue have um, dealt with earlier years and the way in which the deadline for overpayment relief claims has already passed for 2018, 19 and earlier years. Now, the last tax year, if you're doing a self-assessment return and the taxpayer had pension income of, let's say, 13,000, gross interest of 12 and a half, uh, dividends of 15,000. And here I've input a chargeable event gain on a UK policy of 123,000 with a term of 10 years. Well, look down here at the calculations that the software comes up with. Both I and HMRC agree that the tax before top slicing relief is 56,813 and that the notional tax on the 123,000 is 24,600. But I calculate the top slicing relief as 20,215. The HMRC self-assessment calculator will calculate it as 2675. It is almost unbelievable. I've not been able to work out exactly where they've gone wrong, but I can see that in the HMRC software, which is based on a massive Excel spreadsheet covering the whole of the self-assessment calculation, they've introduced in the 2023 version a new error. So this is not a technical argument between me and the revenue. This is simply an error that has come into the revenue system. And here, it makes a difference of over £17,500. Now, the problem is that your software is very likely, almost certainly, going to follow the revenues calculator and come up with that 2675. And nobody would be any the wiser because it's so complicated that it's very, very difficult to check these figures. Now, if we look at my workings, then these workings slavishly follow the legislation. And in fact, it is the calculation down here on the tax on just one slice that I've set out in full and the tax on the chargeable event gain is that 2966 there. And that then goes up to this calculation here. And the tax, if we're looking at the complete amount is uh, 49875, that comes from that figure. Um, actually it's the next one down, but it doesn't matter. And that calculates top slicing relief of 20,215. But the revenue software, actually, if the revenue followed their own methodology in their software, they too would come up with 20,215. Let me just enlarge that for you a little bit. But they don't, for some reason, follow it. And the consequence is that in their spreadsheet and uh, that reference at the top there is where you find it in the revenue self-assessment calculator they come up with 2675 it is just extraordinary and that is a massive difference now if i were to look at this for an earlier year if i were to go back to 1920 then in fact both i and the revenue agree 19675 would have been the top slicing relief for that year as it would have been for 2021 and for 21-22, we have the same 20,215, each of us gets the same figure. But for 22-23, and this is not because of a change in the legislation, it's the revenue calculator getting it wrong, there's a massive difference. So that is quite a significant point. If I were to increase the dividend figure to say 55,000, then what happens 
is extremely interesting and a further illustration of how important it is to have this tool, because in this case, the revenue calculator is 4675 of top slicing, whereas mine is only 2675. So what I'm saying there is that the revenue will give too much top slicing relief, too much by £2,000. Um, that, by the way, will change if I change the term. Let me change it from 10 years to 20, and you'll see that the 2000 difference goes up to 4000 And from that, we can deduce that we're looking at a difference of £200 per year of the policy. Now, why is that? And the answer is, and we can see this fairly directly in the workings, if we look down at my workings, then in the calculation of tax on one slice, I've got the personal allowance being allocated to the pension income, the savings rate band, part of that is wasted on the pensions income, the rest of it goes against the interest, and then the personal savings allowance also has to go against the interest. And the statutory point here, which my workings follow to the letter, is that the personal savings allowance has to be allocated in the prescribed order, so first to interest, whereas if I look at the revenues workings in their calculator, and this is something they've built in just for 22-23, and in my view they are wrong, so to do, what the revenue have done is allocate that 500 personal allowance to the chargeable event gains, which is advantageous because that's reducing the tax on the slice by 500 at 40% is 200, for 10 years is 2,000, for 20 years is 4,000. So it's that incorrect, in my view, allocation of the PSA that the revenue have done. Now, what will happen? I suspect that what will happen is that when HMRC realise the errors and accept them, they will then seek to recover, in the example I've now gone back to, the excess relief of 4,000. So if your software is giving that relief, the taxpayer might at a later date um, be asked to pay back that 4,000 in that example. But in this example, the first one where the dividends were only 15,000, the revenue won't be giving sufficient relief and you will need to claim it. And I don't think there's any other way than this software of seeing exactly what's going on for a particular combination of pension income or employment income, other types of income, including dividends, and then the chargeable event gains. But it does continue to trouble us that the revenue calculator is wrong. And you can see here, I've said uh, that it's this message down here, um, the revenue calculator now recalculates the PSA, which previously they weren't doing in the slice. I argue that's correct. However, uh, it incorrectly allocates it to the slice before allocating to any interest, which is too generous, but wrong in law. So you need to double check. Final point on this, um, I'm currently waiting for a hearing date into the first two of five overpayment relief claims that the revenue have rejected. And the revenue are saying that the original calculations were in accordance with their generally prevailing practice. And I will be taking these cases later this year to the tribunal and hope to establish that the revenue's incorrect methodology ceased to be generally prevailing a lot earlier than they say. And if the tribunal agrees with me, that will generate overpayments for the clients I'm dealing with in total. I think for those five clients, it's well over £100,000. Um, but I mention it because 1920 calculations, and if we look at this one, if I go back to that, 55,000, let's say. Um, actually, I'm not sure it does it here. I haven't got one um, at the tip of my fingers where it's wrong, but there could be claims for 1920 and um, later years where you can make overpayment relief claims if you discover that these figures differ.